Hello, my name is Brianna McMillian and I'm a nursing student here at Bayonne University. Hi, my name is Dr. Danielle Walker and I'm a professor here in health science and public health. Today, Brianna and I just wanted to sit down and talk with you guys just about what's going on in the world, kind of address some questions about COVID-19 and hopefully calm some fears that you guys have. So Dr. Walker, could you tell us a little bit about what the coronavirus is? Yes, so the coronavirus is actually a family of viruses and they're responsible for about 30% of our common colds. And this one that we're seeing now is a new strain of the virus called COVID-19. What are some of the symptoms of COVID-19? So we're seeing a wide range of symptoms with COVID-19. Some people have no symptoms at all. Some people have mild cold-like symptoms. Some people have flu-like symptoms and some people are seeing more severe symptoms. Um, the mild to no symptoms are accounting for about 81% of cases. So really the high risk populations are a small percentage of that. So Dr. Walker, what are the modes of transmission for this virus? So with COVID-19, what we're looking at for modes of transmission are droplet. A lot of people are getting scared and hearing that it's airborne mm -hmm. and it's not airborne. Okay. So to get infected, a sick person has to expel droplets, mm -hmm. usually from coughing or sneezing, and then they have to come in contact with the person's eyes, nose, or mouth. There needs to be some kind of entry point into the body to become infected. So if you're around a group of people and somebody's sick and they cough on you and it comes into your body, you can become sick that way. And also if you touch a surface where somebody has coughed and expelled droplets with the virus, and then you touch your own eyes, nose, or mouth, mm. you can become infected. So Dr. Walker, in our communities, who's at the greatest risk for the COVID-19 virus? So the people or the populations at highest, highest risk for severe transmission of this disease are those who are elderly or have severe underlying medical conditions. Mm. So heart disease, diabetes, if somebody's immunosuppressed, somebody has emphysema mm -hmm. or lung disease, um, those place people at a higher risk for severe forms of COVID-19. Is there currently a treatment for COVID-19? Currently there's no treatment. Um, we are, we have researchers studying the virus mm -hmm. constantly. They're working on testing um, for vaccines and medications as we speak. Um, usually development takes one to two years. Mm -hmm. um, so we just have to wait and see, it changes daily. Are there some steps that we can take to help prevent the spread of COVID-19? Yes, there are so many steps that we can take and some of these might sound so simple and so basic, but they really go a long way to protect those populations at high risk. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we can do is wash our hands. <laughs> um, and everybody's probably getting sick of hearing that, but if we wash our hands with soap and water for at least 20 mm -hmm. seconds, so sing happy birthday two times, wash your hands, get in between your fingers, mm -hmm the backside of your hands um, for 20 seconds, that will really help eliminate the germs. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, if you don't have soap and water available, you can use hand sanitizer, but there's some misconceptions about this. Your hand sanitizer needs to be in a gelled form. Mm -hmm. It needs to be at least 60% alcohol based, and it has to be wet on your hands for at least 15 seconds. So a lot of people like to use hand sanitizer and put it on their hands and kind of shake it off or dry it on a towel or mm -hmm. their clothes, but if you do that, it's not as effective. So mm -hmm. it has to be wet on your hands for at least 15 seconds. Then also social distancing. Mm -hmm. um, if we can remain inside and just not spread this virus because some people don't have symptoms, then we'll protect those mm -hmm. who are at higher risk. Do we need to be wearing masks? So as of right now, it's not recommended that healthy people wear face masks. Um, or gloves. Mm. So masks are recommended for people who are sick because they will be the ones who are coughing and expelling mm. the droplets. But to wear a mask when you're not sick, it's not recommended at this point. What can we do to help keep vulnerable populations safe during this time? So the biggest thing we can do is practice social distancing, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of the hype word right now of staying inside mm -hmm. and not getting in big crowds of people. Um, the reason for this is because we might not be at high risk for getting severe symptoms. Mm -hmm. We could actually carry the disease with no symptoms. Mm -hmm. And when we come in contact with those who are vulnerable, we don't wanna pass on those germs to them. How can we prevent ourselves from living in fear during this time? 
Yes, you know, we live in a day and age where social media is a norm. We have news channels on all the time, just mm -hmm. spreading a lot of fear and misconceptions. And global travel is so easily accessible. So in this time, it's important that we have right sources of information. Biola is staying up to date at biola.edu slash coronavirus. And you can get good, reliable sources there that can direct you to correct information. So it's important that we stay calm and that we not spread misinformation throughout mm -hmm. the mass media. Thank you for watching. We hope this really helped inform you guys. And you know, Biola is just here to help support you through this season and keep checking the website for updates.